Hey everybody, a short one today. So President Joe Biden has called for a minimum wage increase to $15 an hour federally. This is materially, humanitarily, and economically a good idea. I'm going to address each of the most common concerns people have whenever discussion of the minimum wage is brought up and show that actually none of them turn out to be true. Most, if not all of these, are legitimate concerns for the effects of a minimum wage on whether it would accomplish the goal of increasing the material well-beings of people in the country. I will not be belittling these arguments, and I urge you to do the same whenever you talk to someone who has these beliefs and whenever you're in the comments section of this video. First mostly, raising the minimum wage will just make prices rise as well, and it will be useless. Second mostly, raising the minimum wage will cause people to lose their jobs. There are other arguments against raising the minimum wage, but these ones are the ones that people talk about the most. Number one, raising the minimum wage will just make prices rise, making it useless. This is the argument that most people hear against the minimum wage being risen. And it's also the one that perhaps makes the most sense. If a cook, say, makes one hamburger per hour and is paid $7.25 an hour, then for the business to turn a profit if all they sell is hamburgers, they have to sell each hamburger that the employee made for at least $7.25. If the wage that they have to pay the cook goes up to say $15 an hour, then they now need to sell each hamburger that the employee makes for $15. The employee could purchase one hamburger both before and after the wage was increased. This is the argument that real wages won't increase, only nominal wages will. There will be inflation as the prices adjust. Let's look at some data to see if this does end up happening in real life. It's a nice story, but stories only get you so far. Luckily, we're in luck, luckily. The Federal Reserve has people whose entire job is to just go to stores across the country and write down the prices of literally everything that they see. They do this constantly, and because the data is collected by the federal government, it's publicly available for anyone to use, including us. The blue line right here is the Consumer Price Index. This is the price of a bunch of things which the federal government has determined that a typical family of four will purchase within one month. There's actually a list of everything that they include online, I'll link it in the description. Along with this, we can also plot the federal minimum wage. We could break this data down by state or even county if we wanted to, but I'll let you do that if you want. You can see that the cost of goods, the cost of living, goes up pretty steadily, and does so regardless of the minimum wage. It goes up whether or not the minimum wage increases, and doesn't go up any faster if the minimum wage increases. As we would expect if people just immediately adjusted the prices for higher labor costs. Some countries actually tie their own minimum wages to their inflation rate. Without your wage or salary getting adjusted for inflation each year, you really are being paid less because your dollars can't purchase as much as they could have otherwise. If raising the minimum wage really did cause inflation, we would see these countries, many countries in fact, spiral away into hyperinflation. But we don't. France is actually a really good example of a country that does this. They tie the minimum wage not only to inflation, but also to the median income. That way, as everyone in the country gets wealthier, no one is left behind as well as being adjusted for the cost of living or prices increasing. Number two, raising the minimum wage will cause people to lose their jobs. This one I hear more from economists than the general public. So let's look at the supply and demand for employees. Let's say that this is the market for minimum wage employees. This is the demand line. Unlike most markets where people are the ones demanding stuff, in the market for jobs, the companies are the ones demanding stuff. As the wage that they must pay goes up, the amount of people that they will be willing to hire goes down. This is the supply line. It represents people who are willing to work. As the wage increases, the amount of people willing to work will also increase. The point where these two lines meet is the equilibrium, and it marks the wage that minimum wage employees are paid and how many of them are hired. Now, there isn't actually a minimum wage in this market, but let's say that the government comes in and sets one, a minimum wage, also known as a price floor, is put above the market equilibrium, above the market wage. Now, because suppliers have to pay this much, they're going to hire less workers than they would before. We would expect unemployment to increase. Well, let's again look at the data. Luckily, economists have been investigating this. 
the majority of them find that the effect of an increase in the minimum wage has either zero effect on unemployment or causes more people to be employed, not less. But what if the company cuts costs in other ways? Are on-the-job training hours cut? Nope. What about non-wage benefits? Also no. So where are the economists going wrong? It turns out that whenever we raise the minimum wage, either no jobs are lost or more jobs are created. They made a really simple mistake, actually. They assumed that we were at the equilibrium point in the market for jobs. In the real world, no market is ever at the equilibrium. There are many, many assumptions which are made for the model of the free market, which is what's being muddled here, to apply to a market in the real world, and the labor market doesn't meet them basically at all, meaning that it's not a very good way of modeling behaviors in the market, meaning using the model to predict the outcomes in the labor market isn't going to do us much good. First, everyone in a perfect competition market must have perfect knowledge of what everyone else is being paid. I don't have to tell you that this is just not true for any labor market, except maybe in companies with unions or government jobs which have to publish salaries. Next, there can be no cost for someone to enter or exit the market. Considering the fact that everyone needs a job to survive, there's quite a large cost to leaving the labor market. And since setting up a business isn't free, my father gave me a small loan of a million dollars, there's a big cost for entering it as well. Next, there needs to be an infinite number of buyers and sellers. This is never ever true, but the smaller the number, the less well the market is approximated by our model. Because there are always way more workers than there are companies, the companies can typically set the wage to whatever they want. They're price setters, not price takers. And it's most profitable for companies if they pay as little as possible. All of these characteristics mean that the labor market for these types of jobs is going to be paying below what we would normally expect. A minimum wage law would push the wage up, but also increase the number of people working. It's going to be pushing us toward the equilibrium that would exist if the market were competitive. This is consistent with the empirical evidence. When minimum wage has any effect at all, it's usually that it increases jobs. But most of the time, minimum wage increases have no effect on unemployment. But when they do, more people are hired. So raising the minimum wage either helps the people who already have jobs, or creates more jobs which are better than they would have been otherwise. And now for one final argument that I see a lot. This one boils down to a subjective statement, but is one that I think is really kind of… ugly. This is the argument that people working minimum wage jobs somehow don't deserve to be paid $15 an hour. This is usually made by people who are currently making at, around, or just above $15 an hour, and had to work quite a while to get where they are. I would like to tackle two things here, uh, directly targeted at these people who work these types of jobs and have this opinion. First, the market for any job is inefficient in the same way, just like the market for minimum wage jobs. So these jobs are also being underpaid as well. You're being underpaid. Luckily, increasing the minimum wage helps you and other people in these positions because of a second thing that I'm going to mention. A minimum wage being a living wage is good for you even if you had to work to get to where you are now. Say you're one of those teachers or a manager or some other qualified employee making just under or even just over $15 an hour. Now, you're definitely being paid less than you're worth. After all, if the company paid you an amount equal to the wealth that you generated while working, they wouldn't be making a profit, and so wouldn't have hired you to begin with. So now, you have a powerful tool. You and your coworkers can threaten to quit and get a job at McDonald's unless you're paid more, get a better say in your schedule, certain benefits, etc. A higher minimum wage isn't cheating you, it's giving you options. If anything, it makes the hard work that you had to put in to get where you are worth even more, since you're now in a much better and more powerful position than you would be otherwise. So that's just some quick stuff on the minimum wage. I know it's shorter than my other videos, but it was timely, and I wanted to dispel some of the myths around the minimum wage. If you liked this video, please check out some of my others, and if there's something that you want me to make a video on that I haven't, just leave a comment. I read all of them. Links to the studies I cited and resources I used are of course in the description if you want to call me out or say that I misinterpreted something. I hope the rest of your day is the best of your day.